It's time for the whole nine yards. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ralph Fentry. It is week seven of the FCS season. Six NEC teams are in action. Duquesne, Wagner, Merrimack are on a bye, but we have two conference games, including the game of the week on ESPN3, two non-conference games against Ivy League opponents. I'll tell you all about it and more. Let's kick it off with the opening drive. First up, we'll tackle the Keystone State Clash. Robert Morris visiting St. Francis U. Both teams coming off the bye week. There could be plenty of pass defense in this one. Both teams have high rankings in that area. Robert Morris allowing only 157 pass yards per game. That's first in the NEC. On the other side, St. Francis has a 97.9 pass defense efficiency rating. That is the third best number in the entire football championship subdivision. Now, both of these defenses have the capability to slow down the opposing passing game. Well, what about the rushing attack? Well, for Robert Morris, they've had some success in that area this season. In particular, Elijah Jackson, the sophomore from New Jersey, has been outstanding. The second leading rusher in the Northeast Conference, 501 yards in his first five games, 5.9 yards per carry for Jackson. And in road games, he's been especially effective. 20 carries for 140 yards at Youngstown State. 125 yards in a win at VMI. 85 yards in a touchdown at FBS member Buffalo. Elijah Jackson does not matter who the competition is. He's been running the ball well all year. Now, as far as SFU goes, they'll look to slow down Jackson, and that run defense has been stout thus far this season. In the Red Flash's three victories, they've held the opponents to 60 yards per game on the ground. Robert Morris, St. Francis, two Keystone State rivals, live on NEC Front Row. Let's step out of conference to look at one of two matchups against Ivy Leaguers in Week 7. First up, it'll be Central Connecticut State. They're visiting Columbia. Columbia handled St. Francis in Week 3. Now the Lions will host what has been the NEC's top team through the first portion of the schedule. CCSU with three non-conference wins, nearly a fourth at FBS member Eastern Michigan. Then the Blue Devils opened up NEC play by stifling Sacred Heart on the road. Sacred Heart had the NEC's top-ranked passing attack heading into the game, but the Blue Devils came away with the 28-3 victory. And we'll have more about that CCSU pass defense later on in the show. As for the pending matchup with Columbia, the CCSU offense can help itself out by controlling the battle at the line of scrimmage and then letting their playmakers loose. Quarterback Aaron Winchester, 337 yards of offense in the win over Sacred Heart. That's the fourth highest total by an NEC quarterback thus far this season. And then, of course, his top target is Tyshawn James. James with five receiving touchdowns, but he's also extremely dangerous in the run game. James, he'll take jet sweeps. He'll take reverse handoffs. He will take snaps out of the Wildcat and he has four rushing touchdowns already this season. 
We'll see if he can keep that mojo going when the Blue Devils take Manhattan, CCSU at Columbia on ESPN+. Now, Sacred Heart is also on the road facing an Ivy League team in Week 7. The Pioneers head down to Philly. They're looking to rebound from last week's loss against CCSU. They'll face the Penn Quakers. And SHU linebacker Chris Outerbridge spoke about the team's mentality heading into the road game. We just have to do our job every down. We have to do our job. So pretty much we just getting back to the drawing board this week, planning for UPenn and we're on to the next. Can't dwell on losses too much. We gotta move forward. As for SHU in road games, they have won two of those this year. And in those two wins, quarterback Logan Marchie exceeded 350 yards passing. So more than 700 yards combined in those two road wins. They put up 90 points in those victories. So we'll see if that passing attack can reignite on the road at Penn. Look out for Tyrese Chambers. He had 53 yards in last week's setback to CCSU. He is the leading receiver, a freshman, the leading receiver in the Northeast Conference as we hit the midway point of the season. One more note, if this game is anything like last year's meeting between Penn and Sacred Heart, you'll be in for an instant classic. Penn jumped out on top 24-0. Sacred Heart took a 27-24 lead. Penn, with the last-minute touchdown, stole a win last year at SHU. Pioneers looking for revenge, looking to bounce back from a Week 6 setback. SHU at Pennsylvania, live on ESPN+. And now for the NEC Featured Game of the Week on ESPN3. It's LIU visiting Bryant. It'll be the first meeting between these two programs at the Division I level. LIU still looking for its first victory of the season, despite a tough showing, great effort on the road against the NEC preseason favorite Duquesne Dukes last week. LIU quarterback Clay Bethard with two second half touchdown passes that was a one-score game. As for the Sharks' progress as a program through their first four games of the season, head coach Brian Collins seemed pretty optimistic. Now, Newsday does a great job of covering LIU athletics, in particular the Sharks' football program. And in the Newsday story on Sunday, Kenny DeJean quoted, head coach Brian Collins as saying that he thought his team prepared much better last week. It may have been their best week of preparation to date, and Coach Collins saw those results on the field at Duquesne. So LIU, they yes, they're 0-4, but they feel like they are close, ever so close, to getting into the win column. As for Bryant... They broke into the win column last week at Merrimack. They took a lead into the fourth quarter once again, and this time the Bulldogs finished. Alfred Dorbor with a career day, over 130 rushing yards for the Bulldogs. And at the end of the day, they were thrilled to secure a victory, and head coach Chris Merritt sees that as evidence of improvement. This is a, 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 just a, another performance where they're getting better and better and, and the rushing yardage was, was down this week. So, you know, this is a deal where we're just hopefully getting better as a football team and, and they're buying into it. Now we just uh, have to put it back to back. We needed Saturday's win, we needed to go on the road. We did it on the road in front of their homecoming crowd and that was big for us. And now we just have to build on it. We have to just, you know, take that momentum, take that uh, uh, that, that uh, confidence, okay, and we have to take it to the next level. 
Let's check in on the NEC stock market. I'll tell you whose value is all the way up. A lot of eyes on Robert Morris's Elijah Jackson in Saturday's matchup with SFU. But what about St. Francis? How about their run game? And how about junior Joel Denley? Now, Denley played in 21 games as an underclassman, but not many touches. He surfaced this season in the Week 3 win over Merrimack with a 5-yard touchdown run. He also had two catches for 28 yards in that game. Then came a tough day against Columbia in Week 4. 15 touches, only 14 rush yards for Denley in that one. But then he bounced back in a big way. 15 carries for 100 rush yards in the recent win over Bryant, the NEC opener for the Red Flash. It was the first time the program saw an individual reach the 100-yard rushing mark in a game since the 2017 season. So on a day where offense was at a premium, Denley grinded out a 100-yard day on the ground. It appears as if there will be more opportunities ahead for the junior running back. Joel Denley's stock is on the way up. I'm taking the Twitter timeout. Looking at the tweet sheet, this one here from Pittsburgh Sports Now. It caught my eye. A nice post-game feature story on Duquesne running back A.J. Hines. The senior All-American was sidelined for two games earlier in the year. He returned with a vengeance in the NEC opener against LIU. He went for 140 yards in the victory. More notably, he achieved a career milestone in the win. Hines became the ninth rusher in NEC history to reach the 4,000-yard plateau. And his 22nd 100-yard game brought him closer to Duquesne rushing record holder Larry McCoy. McCoy, a former All-NEC performer, is now a running backs coach for Duquesne. And McCoy himself ran for over 4,500 yards as a Duke, second all-time on the NEC's rushing chart. So if you get a chance, check out the story on A.J. Hines and Larry McCoy, an all-time great and an active All-American. It promises to be a special second half of the season at Duquesne. That's amazing, bro. What has me in a state of amazement this week? Well, it's that CCSU defense I told you we talk more about the Blue Devils' past defense later on in the show, and this is where we're going to do just that. CCSU picked off Sacred Heart quarterback Logan Marshy twice in last week's win over the Pioneers. Marshy had been intercepted only once in the season's first four games, but then he goes up against CCSU, and the Blue Devils just happen to be the FCS leader in team interceptions. 11 picks for the Blue Devils this year, over two per game. They're technically tied with North Carolina Central for first in the FCS, but NCC has played six games. Blue Devils have 11 picks in just five games. 15 total takeaways for CCSU thus far this season. That's tied for fourth in the FCS. As far as interceptions go, eight different players have picked off a pass for the CCSU defense. Kendall Coles leads the group with three INTs. CCSU leads the nation in INTs. 11 picks for the defense, 
and stats amazing. As we do on a weekly basis, we link up with Rick Saratella of NFL Draft Bible, chopping it up about NEC football. Have a look at the week seven NEC football chop shop. We're back in the chop shop, talking some NEC football. I'm Ralph Ventry, he's Rick Saratella. Rick, we have a couple week seven matchups to tackle, but before we do that, hit us with your week six game balls. Absolutely, Ralph. You know, we're chopping it up each and every week, identifying the top performers in the NEC conference, and let's go right back to the train, the A train, that's AJ Hines, Coming back off injury, his backup, Mark Allen, stepped in, held down the fort. But A.J. Uh, Hines getting that train rolling once again. 32 carries, this workhorse back, toting a rock, 146 yards, a touchdown and the big win over LIU, putting Duquesne on the board in the conference with their first conference victory. Of course, now 3-2 and two on the season. Most notably in this record-setting career of A.J. Hines now, 22 games where he's exceeded that 100-yard barrier mark. So A.J. Hines gets the offensive game ball of the week, defensive game ball. Let's head up to Rhode Island. Uh, this Thomas right now, he's catching my attention. This Bryant defensive lineman, uh, first victory of the season over Merrimack behind a stout performance by Wright on the defensive side of the ball. The price is right because five tackles, including one and a half sacks, a big blocked kick. He now has 35 tackles on the season, six and a half tackles for loss, four sacks. He is stuffing the stat box through his first six games. So this Thomas Wright of Bryant is a name now NFL PA Bowl has to go and pay attention to. Maybe he's a safety hybrid type. Maybe he's an edge rusher. He's an intriguing talent. He's a playmaker for that Bryant football squad. And uh, don't forget about your boy, uh, Vinny Nizavaccia. Obviously, Tom Kennedy graduated. He's with the Lions now. So he leaves a little bit of a void on the Bryant offense. But Vin Nizavaccia, once again, has performed for the Bulldogs. Eight receptions, another touchdown catch in the win over Merrimack. I know you gave him a shout out last week, but uh, your cousin Vinny doing some good things once again. Yeah, Vincent Nizavaccia, there goes that man again. He's making plays all over the field. Uh, possession wide out. Someone who's just a dependable, reliable, sure-handed receiver. Uh, you know, check his hands for stick and Ralph. The man does not drop a ball. All right, Rick. Well, now let's move on to week seven. Two NEC teams stepping out of conference to take on Ivy League members. Central Connecticut, Columbia, Sacred Heart at Penn. I know you're familiar with all of these teams. I think you got to look at Penn last week. Uh, what do you got as far as these two NEC versus Ivy in week seven? Yeah, we talked about that Central Connecticut and uh, Sacred Heart matchup on last week's Chop Shop. Uh, Central Connecticut coming out victorious with the big win there, improving their mark to four and one. And they take on a Columbia football team now. These are some FCA, these are some tough squads here. Columbia, don't be deceived by the record. One and two, but I got news for you. Al Bagnoli always comes prepared to play. You're talking about a man who won nine Ivy League titles during his time at Penn. They're going to be ready to play. Uh, for Central Connecticut, NEC Offensive Player of the Week, Aaron Winchester. Uh, 337 total yards a week ago, a career high, uh, 275 passing yards, um, gets the victory in that nutmeg rivalry, and he's, he's a problem now. He's a dual-threat quarterback that Columbia is going to have to account for, but the man they're really going to have to stop is this Tyshawn James. There's not much this man can't do. Uh, rushing, receiving, 74 yards through the air, a uh, dozen yards rushing, most importantly, last week, two touchdowns in that big uh, win over Sacred Heart. He now has nine touchdowns through five games, of course, returning kicks as well. Uh, Tyshawn James, 
I mean, he is on pace to be the NEC MVP, the way he's going. And then, you know, we've talked about the Excel, Excel Home brothers, DJ and Danley. This one-two combination on offense and defense. You got Danley with uh, nearly 200 yards rushing this year, averaging five yards a clip, three pay dirt scores on the season. And then on the defensive side, DJ holding it down, 36 tackles this year, leads the team, has a bunch of uh, forced fumbles, a fumble recovery. So Central Connecticut getting it done on both sides of the ball. And we saw that last week against Sacred Heart. The offense and defense both stepping up. Now Central took care of Sacred Heart in what was the Blue Devils NEC opener last week. Now Sacred Heart, they're looking to rebound from that loss. They had two good non-league wins over Patriot League teams earlier in the year. Now they're heading down to Philly to take on Penn. What will we see in that Sacred Heart Penn matchup. Yeah, you know, Sacred Heart's going to have to bounce back here. We've talked about Logan Marchi, the talented quarterback transfer from Temple. Central last week, adding a little kryptonite to his game. First time he's been stopped all season long. Uh, only 126 yards passing. Obviously, he's leading the NEC in passing yards. But two costly interceptions last week against those Blue Devils. He'll need to be better this week. And he'll be looking for Tyrese Chambers early and often. Uh, Chambers still in a losing effort, 53 yards. He's averaging now 18 yards a catch on the season. He's got five touchdowns, a playmaking threat. So that Marchie to Chambers duo through the air is going to be a problem for Penn. And then you add in Julius Chestnut on the ground. All he's doing is grounding and pounding it out. Five and a half yards per clip. Uh, almost 600 yards rushing now through the first five games. So we've talked about that three-headed monster on the offensive side for Sacred Heart. And Ralph, I don't know if you've ever been to Franklin Field. It was the 125th anniversary of the stadium i had the opportunity to check it out friday night lights uh if you get the opportunity the nostalgia in this building walking around underground through the tunnels there's just not too many venues like it so uh, sacred heart will be in a unique situation this upcoming weekend yeah definitely a special <laughs> venue sacred heart in philly at franklin field to take on penn central connecticut in New York City to take on Columbia. Two non-league matchups in week seven. Rick, as always, I appreciate your time. It's a pleasure to chop it up. Talking NEC football, I'm Ralph. He's Rick Saratella. Until next time. And that'll do it for our show. Six teams in action, four games to follow this Saturday. One on front row, our featured game of the week on ESPN3, and then two non-conference games on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Ralph Entry. Thank you for watching the whole nine yards. Until next week, this has been a production of NEC Front Row.